to Mark 16 for a moment. And this is Jesus speaking. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be what? Condemned. And what's the word believe me? Follow. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will what? They will what? Cast out demons. He said that's the first thing that you'll do. So it's our responsibility to remove demons, but there's got to be a cooperation for that to happen. Amen. That's why we bring people through deliverance. He said that we would cast out demons. I've seen many demons manifest. I've seen people turn into snakes and go down the hallways. I've seen them turn into spiders and dance and go back all the way around. I've seen all kinds of things. Eyes rolling, all kinds of things. Flipping and flapping out of their seats and seizures and all kinds of stuff. But those are demons. You've got to learn not to be distracted by them. So what do you understand? Now there's a time for deliverance. We used to get people that call for, that were bound by drugs and alcohol and wanted to come to our Friday night anointing services and wanted to get prayed for. I wouldn't pray for any of them until they, got, until they prayed enough and sowed enough. And the Lord wouldn't let me. They got to sow enough in the spirit to receive. See, you've got to sow to reach a level of reception. So that's where you and I have got to fight spiritually, and there's a spiritual battle going on. Amen? He says, and they will cast out demons, and that's the first thing he talks about. They will speak with new tongues. Why? Because they've been baptized by the fire of God, and they have a new language. They make another connection. That connection is to the anointing of God, which gives them the authority. They will take up serpents, and they will drink anything deadly. It will by no means hurt them. Of course, you ain't going to tempt God, are you? And they will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Sometimes that's a process. Sometimes heal, God heals them right away. I've seen that happen. I've seen spirits of cancer leave people. I see spirits of nicotine leave people all the time. Deaf and dumb spirits and so forth, all kinds of demons. But remember that we're not fighting flesh and blood. We're fighting powers of darkness. But you can't be distracted by manifestations. You maintain course. God's going to take care of it. There's a time and place for everything. And it's got to be God's timing. Amen. I've been at multiple. We used to do healing services. We used to travel and do healing services. And let me tell you, I've seen many people get healed of cancer and everything else. People that couldn't walk, we'd remove the uh, walkers from them. we get letters later telling us, you know, let us know later that, uh, months later, that they're finally with their grandchildren, this, that, whatever. But when a demon began to manifest, that was over to the side. Because one of the manifestations of a demon loves to distract and take things out. And I've been fooled multiple times, trying to cast a demon out of someone that wasn't ready yet. You know, it just didn't work. So there's got to be a, a time for everything. In other words, there's got to be enough where an individual is sowed enough in the spirit for a demon to leave. That's why we don't do deliverance in our discipleship for, what, three, four months down the road? Because they're sowing enough, praying enough, and, and so forth. Why? So those spirits leave. In fact, as you're praying and, and doing your prayers, spirits are beginning to leave you already. As you're praising and worshiping, demons are leaving you already. And they hate God's presence. So where do you think they're going to manifest? Amen? Praise God. Turn to Romans chapter 1. You remember, this is training for reigning. You're being raised up to be warriors in the body of Christ, officers. And when you lay hands on somebody and the Lord's not told you to, those demons can go in you. Hallelujah. Romans 1, verse 18. 
Romans 1.18, let's speak it together. Everybody there? Okay. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against what? All ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because what may be known of God is manifested in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lusts of their hearts. Remember, lust is an overwhelming desire in the hearts because the heart is the core of all desire. To dishonor their bodies among themselves. They were going to dishonor their bodies. How do you dishonor your body? Well, you know, people may think tattoo, cuttings, this and that. No, he's call, call, talking about sexual perversion, dishonoring their bodies. Amen? Who exchanged, look at verse 25, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions. For even their women exchanged the natural use of what is against nature. In other words, perversion, sexual perversion, intercourse, not only the same sex, but adulterous but also with animals. It says, verse 27, Likewise, also the men, leaving the nat natural use of the woman, burn in their lust for one another. That's homosexuality. Men with men, committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error, which was due. And what was it? Death. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do the things which are not fitting. So God let them run the course. Being filled with all unrighteousness and sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness, they are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death. Not only do the same, but also approve of those who, who practice them. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? So think about this. You know, we, we, we did that song about the Pharisees and Sadducees and so forth. And, you know, we see that what's happening right now, the political arena and all the government officials and all kinds of things that are going on. You've got transgenders, uh, homosexuals, lesbians. You've got, um, what do you call them? Um, these queens and what do you call them? What, are, what is it? Drag queens. Drag queens. Dragon queens, you know. Drag queens and drag kings and all of this. I mean, man, it's getting crazy. Why, why is this happening? Why is it being so manifested? Because these are spirits from Sodom and Gomorrah. They're spirits from Sodom and Gomorrah. They're manifesting all over the place. They're trying to pervert children. Not only are they abducting them. Trying to give them their own choice of being a male or female. In other words, nullifying what God has called them to be. Amen? These individuals carry spirits or demons of Sodom and Gomorrah. Sexual perversion. It's manifesting all over. In Genesis chapter 19.
sure you've heard the story of Lot. In verse 1, let's speak it. Now two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face towards the ground. Verse 2. And he said, Here now, my lords, please turn to your servant's house and spend the night and wash your feet. Then you may rise early and go on your way. And they said, No, but we will spend the night in the open square. But he insisted strongly, so they turned to him and entered his house. Then he made them a feast and baked unleavened bread, and they ate. Now, therefore, they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, both old and young, all the people from every squ uh, quarter surrounded the house. And they called to Lot and said to him, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us that we may know them carnally. In other words, have sexual perversion. Does everybody understand this? It's amazing how all the time people are just trying to cover up. They don't want to talk about it. But this is what's going on. We'll talk their sources here in a minute. So Lot went out to them through the doorway, shut the door behind him, and said, please, my brethren, do not do so wickedly. Hmm. See, now I have two daughters who have not known a man. Please let me bring them out to you, and you may do to them as you wish, nice father. Take the girls. What the heck, stupid? Because he reverenced the angels more than his family. Like the angels couldn't take care of themselves. Maybe Lot didn't understand that yet. Since this is the reason they have come under the shadow of my roof. And they said, stand back. Then they said, this one came in to stay here, and he keeps acting as a judge. Now we will deal worse with you than with them. So they pressed hard against the man lot and came near to break down the door. Then the men reached out their hands and pulled Lot inside the house with them and shut the door. And they struck the men who were at the doorway of the house with blindness, both small and great. So they became weary trying to find the door. Then the men said to Lot, Have you anyone else here, son-in-law, your sons, your daughters, Whomever you have in the city, take them out of this place. For we will destroy this place because the outcry against them has grown great before the face of the Lord, and the Lord has sent us to destroy it. So Lot went out and spoke to his son-in-laws, who had married his daughters, and said, Get up and get out of this place, for the Lord will destroy the city. But to his son-in-laws, he seemed to be joking. When the morning dawned, the angels urged Lot to hurry, saying, Arise, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, lest you be consumed in the punishment of the city. And while he lingered, the men took hold of his hand and said, Let's go, bro. His wife's hand and the two hands of the two daughters, the Lord being merciful to him, and they brought him out to set him outside the city. So it came to pass when they had brought them outside that he said, Escape for your life. Do not look behind. You now stay anywhere in the plain. Escape to the mountains lest you be destroyed. And Lot said to him, Please know my lords. Indeed, now your servant has found favor in your sight, and you have increased your mercy which you have shown me by saving my life. But I cannot escape to the mountains lest some evil overtake me and I die. See, now this city is near enough to flee to, and it is a little one. Please let me escape there. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. And he said to him, See, I have favored you concerning this thing also, and then I will not overthrow the city for which you have spoken. Hurry, escape there, for I cannot do anything until you arrive there. So in other words, he was getting his instructions. The angels were getting their instructions from the Lord now. 
Therefore, the name of the city is called Zorro. The sun had risen upon the earth when Lot entered Zorro. And the Lord rained brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. So he overthrew those cities, all the plain, all the inhabitants of the cities, what is, uh, what grew on the ground. But his wife looked back behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. Remember, they said, do not look back. And Abraham went early in the morning to the place where he had stood before the Lord, and then he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all the land of the plain, and he saw, and behold, the smoke of the lamb, which went up like a smoke of a furnace. And it had come to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain, and God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the, and the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in which Lot had dwelt. Very, very powerful. Again, these spirits left these human hosts and went into other human hosts. Continuing this to this day, when an individual dies, those demons go into somebody else. They usually go down the family line. Again, transgender, homosexual, lesbian, drag queens and kings. And they want the children of the innocent because we are in the days of evil. Does everybody get it? That's why you're still seeing all this stuff. You're wondering why, how can this still be? I mean, it's getting worse and worse and worse because these spirits have now taken possession and hold seats and positions of authority. Go to Matthew 24. In verse 36, But of the day and the hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days of Noah, before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. And did not know until the flood came and took them away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Then two men will be in the field, one will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken, and one will be left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief, <laughs> the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Now what is the house? The temple. See, he's talking about this temple. It was the days of Noah. God destroyed the human host of demonic inbreeding from the fallen angels of wickedness. That's why the flood came. Does everybody get it? Well, go to Genesis 6. I was at a ministry one time really goofy and I was there just um, as a volunteer and they thought I was a strange dude well I am but still because they didn't like that I spoke about demons a lot and uh, they were opening the doors to demonic influence all the time they were playing secular music trying to get people off of drugs and alcohol they were allowing them to smoke do this and that and whatever and it was all opening doors and I kept sharing with them what was going on. And they kept saying, man, these think that there's demons around everywhere. I said, well, yeah. I wanted to tell them I was talking to one, but I didn't. And I'm so um, engaged in this, in the reality of it, because in my visitation from the Lord, a serpent came out of my body. I can't deny that manifested right in front of me and tried to bite my dog. And this thing was wicked and evil and vicious and big. Thank God the Lord was there. Because I didn't know what to do. And that's what I said. Lord, what do I do? Next thing I know, because I was filled with the presence and power of Christ Jesus, 
I put my hands towards the serpent and said, from the love of God, I curse you, Satan. And this thing curled up to move away. Satan is not one person. It's a representation of adversary, evil, wicked. There is an antichrist individual known as Lucifer, who is the head of the organization. But again, it's, and I've seen so many manifestations of demonic spirits and deliverance and everything else. I mean, it's a part of life now. And as a true believer of Christ Jesus, it should be a part of your life. You want to remove spirits, but you want to remove them from you, first of all. Amen? You want to remove them from your presence and from your homes and from things. And people don't realize the cursed items that come in and how they open doors and so forth. So that's why we teach what we teach here. Because the problem is demons. That's the problem. Well, I don't believe that. It's because you got a demon. <laughs> it's called a spirit of unbelief. Well, I don't want to cooperate. It's because you got demons. Well, I don't feel them. You don't have to feel them. Everybody can tell by your fruit you got them. That's why the Bible tells us you'll know them by their fruit. Amen. Demons always manifest a fruit. And it's not a good one. It's usually rebellion is the worst. Hallelujah. Genesis 6, 1. Let's speak it. Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God, which are angels, saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful, and they took wives from themselves of all whom they chose. So these spirit, these fallen angels, put on flesh, came into this realm, amen, and produced offspring. Those were called Nephilims. All right. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh. Yet his days will be 120 years. There were giants on the earth in those days, and also afterward when the sons of God, the fallen angels, came in to the daughters of the men, and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old men of renown. So it says that there were giants already in those days before these angels came and put flesh on and went into the woman. How did those demons come? Because of Cain. Remember, Eve was seduced by the serpent. Amen? And the, one, the two children she had, Cain was from the wicked one, it says. So his marriage with all the other humans on the earth as they produce more and more children, his family line carried on the same seeds of the fallen angels from the serpent or Lucifer. Does everybody get this? And so those spirits were there. Now, now you're talking about interbreeding for 400 years. This was not going on 400 years. How long was it in the captivity? 400 years. Mm. That's a whole nother thing. All right. <laughs> Is everybody okay? Look at verse 5. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of their thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth and he was grieved in his, spirit, in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air. For I am sorry that I made man, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Again, these were giants from Cain, giants and the giants from the fallen nations, offsprings. So you might want to look at Cain as the son of Satan. Does everybody get it? He was the first human son of Satan in this realm. And again, this interbreeding. So in this, because they're, the perverseness of them, um, they began to eventually run out of food. They began to eat each other. 
they had intercourse with anything possible. And again, we had these giants. Some of them were 25 feet, 15 feet, whatever. They still have skull, skulls of them and skeletons all over the world they find. But you sure ain't going to see it on CNN. Amen? Hallelujah. Again, think about this interbreeding that went on for 400 years. So when God destroyed them in the flood, those spirits of those offsprings became demons. And a demon is a disembodied spirit looking for one. It has to have one. Amen? All right. 1 Corinthians 6. It's amazing to me that we're, because, I mean, these principals and the, these school boards are allowing these into schools where young kids are seeing these drag queens and so forth and encouraging them. Why? Because the demons in them are promoting the demons in the others. Oh, glory. You know, you talk to somebody that's been a homosexual or lesbian or whatever for a while, and, they, and their first thing is, well, I, I, it's, I've been like this my whole life. Because that spirit's been there even in the womb. Remember, you inherit everything. That's why it's called the bloodline. Until somebody breaks that off. You become what you've inherited. Well, I don't know anybody that's, but, but there's things that you don't know down your family line. 1 Corinthians 6. Verse 8, but speak it, no, you yourselves do wrong and cheat, and you do these things to your brethren. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous nor drunkards, nor revelries, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. So people can get, get delivered from these things, can't they? Amen. But if they continue to practice those things or approve of those things, they will not. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1. But know this, that in the last days, are we in the last days? If you don't know it, you better repent and try again. But know this, in the last days, perilous times will come. We're in it. For men will be lovers of themselves. Lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasters, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power from such people turn away. For of this sort are those who creep into households, ministries, and businesses, and make captives of gullible men and women, load them down with sins, led away with what? Various lusts. Everything's about lust. Why? It's an overwhelming desire, isn't it? It's an emotion. That's how demonic forces utilize individuals. Always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now, Janus and Jasperus resisted Moses. So did these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapprove concerning the faith but they will progress no further for their folly will be manifest to all as theirs also was it always comes to manifestation no matter what it always comes to the surface 
These are demons. These are individuals that are associated or, or they are temples of demons of Sodom and Gomorrah. In Jude, verse 5. But I want to remind you, though, you once knew this, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. And the angels who did not keep their proper domain. What angels were those? The fallen ones, amen, that put on flesh. But left their own abode. He has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. Why? Because the Lord took those angels and put them there. And so no angel can put on flesh again without permission. Does everybody get it? Or they'll what? They'll be chained. That's why Lucifer, when he puts on flesh, what's his end result? Chained. Hallelujah. Verse 7, as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in a similar manner to these, having given themselves over to what? Sexual immorality, going after strange flesh. That means all kinds of flesh. Animal, whatever. Are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise, also these dreamers defile the flesh, reject authority, and speak evil of dignitaries. Yet Michael the archangel, in the contending with the devil, when he disputed about the body of Moses, dared not bring against him a reviling accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke you. But these speak evil of whatever they do not know or they, un they don't understand. And whatever they know naturally, like brute beasts, in these things they corrupt themselves. Woe to them without eternity, W-O-E. For they have gone in the way of what? Cain. Have run greedily in the air of Balaam for profit in the parish and the rebellion of Korah. These are spots in your love feast while they feast with you without fear, serving only themselves. They are clouds without water, carried about by the winds, late autumn trees without fruit, twice dead, pulled up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming up their own shame, wandering stars. Now, what's a star mean? It's associated with angels. For whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever? Now, Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men also, saying, Behold, the Lord comes with 10,000 of the saints, to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them all, their ungodly deeds which they have committed in an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. They won't get away with it, will they? Nobody does. These are grumblers and complainers, walking according to their own lusts, own desires. And they mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. These are sensual persons who cause divisions, not having the Spirit of God. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in tongues. Let me tell you, tongues is a weapon for at now. Does everybody get it? Tongues is a weapon. You need to be praying in tongues. You need to desire it. God ain't giving you something you don't desire. Amen? You need to seek it and get it. But he's not going to give it to you if you don't desire if you don't desire it. And he's certainly not going to give it to you if you're out of order. But tongues is an essential weapon for time now, for this time, what we're in. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercies of our Lord Jesus Christ until, uh, unto eternal life. And on some have compassion, making a distinction. But on others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment, 
defiled by the flesh. Yeah. Again, the weapon of tongues is essential. Ephesians chapter 6, 10. So your next fa family gathering, you can speak about all this stuff, you know. <laughs> it's truth. It's definitely truth. <laughs> Verse 10, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. That's the trickery. Or the lust of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. In other words, your struggles are not physical. They're spiritual. Amen? But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand, withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Then he talks about putting the full armor of God on. Vital. Standing against the lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and the pride of self. Remember, lust is the big thing. Those are three the categories. And there's many things that come down those categories. And Matthew 12, 43. When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest and finds none. Then he says, I will return to my house, which I came from. What's the house? You, the temple, the spirits that left you. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept and put in order. Whoa. Nice place. Empty. In other words, not filled with the spirits. Why? Because they're not worshipers. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter and dwell there. And at the last day of that man is worse than the first, and so shall it be with this wicked generation. So that's why it's important that it's important that an individual knows how to get filled with put on the form or God and so forth before any spirits begin to leave, because why? They're coming back seven times stronger. I get people call all the time, would you cast a demon out of me? No. Why? Because you're out of order. Your house is out of order. You're still in sin doing this, this, and that. You're still rebellious. You're still not cooperating. When's the last time you prayed? When's the last time you gathered together? Everybody, somebody understand that. When's the last time you worshiped the Lord? Because God won't allow me. When a spirit leaves a person, they will come back with seven others stronger. That's why we don't do deliverance on someone until they're ready. If they're still in a rebellious state all the time, I'm, we're not going to do it. Why? Because then it can't work. There's a lack of cooperation. 1 John chapter 3. We'll go around, oh, I went there and I got delivered. Yeah, I went through deliverance, but it didn't do, it didn't do anything for me. Well, maybe you weren't ready. And that's why they shouldn't have done deliverance. <laughs> First John, where did I say to go? Chapter 3? Okay. Verse 7. First John, chapter 3, verse 7. Everybody there? Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. And not only that, he's not going to sin. There's no desire to sin. Amen? It doesn't mean he won't make a mistake, but there won't be willful sin. Verse 10, in this the children of God and the children of the devil are manifested. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15.
Do not what? Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the what? Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life or the lust of self is not of the Father, but is of the world. Those are three categories of lust. There's many things under those categories. We have a teaching on all that. And the world is passing away in the lust of it, but he who does the will of God does what? Abides forever. Little children, it is the last hour, and you have heard that the Antichrist has come, and even now many Antichrists have come, by which you know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us, for if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest, that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. Acts 17. I know some sweet people, sweet people, really sweet people. And uh, they're believers, and they love the Lord and everything, but they've never been baptized in the Holy Spirit. So there are certain things that they cannot comprehend. There's just certain things that they can't get. Because without the Spirit's interpretation, they can only try to figure it out carnally, mentally, physically. They can't see through. No matter how much you try to explain it to them. One and one still equals three to them. In the Spirit. Does everybody understand that? They won't understand it. Until they are filled with the Spirit of God. Baptized in the Holy Spirit or those scales come off. And the hardness of the heart is removed. But they're sweet people. But there's only certain things we can discuss. If I can't go deep. Really, huh? Anyways. Don't really. Verse 29. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone. Something sh shaped by art and man's devising. Truly these times of ignorance God has overlooked. But now commands all men everywhere to what? Repent. Because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this by raising him from the dead. So we know that judgment. Judgment is actually here. But there's going to be a level of judgment. Amen. Judgment comes in the house of God first. And I'm going to close that Psalm 2. Anybody ever been choked while you were sleeping? You might have a dream where somebody's choking you. It's a demon that comes in your room. My wife, after we had gotten saved, there were witches following us, praying against us all the time. And uh, the Lord began to reveal them to me. And uh, so one, one, one night I, I had a dream, and I had a, a little boy, a little son, and, it was, and, and he would come running in the house and slam the door real quick and say, Daddy, Daddy, it's following me. And I'd say, what's following you? And he didn't tell me. So the next day he comes home. The same thing happens. Daddy, daddy's following me. Something following me. Said, All right. I said, I'm going to get ready the next day. So my son comes home, opens the door, and I'm right there at the door. I open the door, and there's this huge standing wolf, fangs drooling from the mouth. And he went to grab me. And I held his jaws from biting me. And I looked to my left, and there was an angel of the Lord there. And I believe Jesus was behind it. I'm like, well, do something. Because <laughs> I couldn't speak. They were choke. He was choking me, too. And I was trying to say, Jesus, Jesus. And I'm like, I'm looking at him. Ah, 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 ah. And my wife wakes up, and she sees me battling. 
And she says, get off of him in the name of Jesus. Loose my husband and leave her, you foul, unclean spirit. And she commanded those demons to leave me. And they left and booked me. I got up. We were in the waterbed, right? So my side of the waterbed went, whoop. And when those spirits left me, went back up. That's, that happened twice to me. But then after that, and, and again, if you've got accursed items around you, those will allow access. People don't realize about what a cursed item is. Well, I had this one grandma who died. She blessed me with it. Well, is it, what is it? Oh, it's, uh, it's an angel. Well, forget it. Get rid of it. It doesn't matter. Those things are cursed items. Everybody get it? You know? Well, I've had my, my mother's ashes. Get rid of it. <laughs> Dump it somewhere. Mama don't care. She's with Jesus. <laughs> I've seen people, oh, they, have, they're, they're, they carry their mother's or father's or somebody's ashes around their neck in the little thing. I'm like, are you, well, they don't know. Again, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. People wonder why they have struggles. They're just not willing to let things go. We, we've had people come into the program. They, they left because they wouldn't let go of a T-shirt that said uh, Tasmanian devil or something. I had a woman bring her kid in one time. I can't handle them any longer. What do I do with them? Well, get that shirt off, first of all. That said Tasmanian Devil, one of these T-shirts. I said, what else is in the room? You know, these are cursed items. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Some people, even though they call themselves a believer, just are rolling, ah, I don't believe any of that stuff. I'll go ahead and live that way. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus comes to bring life and life abundantly. That means we got to get rid of the things that the devil steals. Amen? Access to us. Access, access. Is everybody okay? Psalm 2, verse 1. Why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed saying, let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. This is how they think about you. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. Hallelujah. The Lord's laughing at all of them. The Lord shall hold them in derision. Then he shall speak to them in his wrath. How is he going to speak to them? In his wrath. That's the, the scripture that we spoke about earlier, the wrath of God. Amen. And distress them in his deep displeasure. Yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree the Lord has said to me. You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance. And the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore be wise O kings. Be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with what? Fear. And rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and you perish in the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all those who put their trust in him. Let's pray. Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for your mercies, grace, and faithfulness. We thank you for wisdom from above which supersedes wisdom from here. And we ask, the Lord, that you continue to bring revelation and impartation to your people, deliverance and healing. And, Lord, that we would use the sword of the Spirit, being filled with your Spirit. Lord, I pray blessing over each and every one. I pray deliverance and healing over each and every one in this room. And revelation that they may see the truth and be thirsty and hungry for the truth. For your glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name.